parts orders, accessory orders, and of course, helmet orders across the country. It's insane. Uh, the amount of demand we're seeing is unprecedented, especially considering the unforeseen circumstances leading up to this spring. Uh, demand is high, stock is low. No one could have foreseen the demand. So we're trying hard to basically produce more helmets as fast as we can. But as you know, Arai is not a commodity product. We can't just turn up the volume and crank them out faster. We're trying, we're improving slowly. Uh, orders are coming in a little bit better, so we're trying to get the product to market, but you have to bear with us. We just, it takes time to make an array. It takes time to spool up production. It takes time to get the materials, get everyone up to speed. And of course, we do not want to rush making array helmets, considering what they're uh, designed to do. So we appreciate your patience. Uh, if you find an array out the market, get it. Don't, don't pause or, or, or take time. If you can find one, buy it because it may not be coming down the pike anytime soon. So with the spring, uh, we want to basically today do a quick show. It's not going to be too long, but we want to do an intro on the new, uh, well, new graphics that are coming in the spring that aren't quite here yet. They're on our website, they're in our catalog, but they're not quite here. But we're also going to do a quick intro on some of the newer graphics that came out a little early. Uh, in the fall and the, uh, the winter of 2020, 2021. So we'll do a quick uh, recap of some of the new graphics. We have a really cool treat. Uh, a little a short time ago, we actually did a private launch to some of our salespeople out in the field of some of these new graphics so they knew what was coming. And we asked Aldo Drudy, one of the most prolific designers that Arai has worked with in the past two decades, to give us some insight into what goes into his thought process when he designs our helmets. And it's really cool that he gives us uh, quite a bit of info on some of the graphics that he's done. So we're gonna share that with you so you guys can see the helmets in 360 spin and get Aldo's words on some of that um, thought process that goes into it. So that's really cool. I'll be doing that and then to end the segment, uh, because spring is coming and everyone's dragging their bikes out of mothballs and their gear, Andrew's going to come up and do a live demonstration on the best way to disassemble and clean your helmet. We have a cleaning video uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're probably going to update it to be a little more in-depth, uh, but Andrew's going to go through it pretty quickly to show you what you can and can't do, what you should and shouldn't do, and basically some techniques to make it easier, simpler, and less likely to damage something. So we're going to basically jump into that right now, and then when I'm done, Andrew will come up do the, uh, the intro, and then after that, we're going to open it up to questions. If you guys want to answer question, ask a question while we're working through the program, Jeff will chime in and let us know. But usually people wait till the end, and we'll answer your questions as long as you have them. So we appreciate that. So we're going to jump over to the other camera, and we'll go through the spins right now. All right, so cool. Green screen, focus, focus. There we go. We're focusing. Excellent. So here you're on the green screen. Uh, the first graphic is going to be the Haga GP. And again, we're going to Drudy's explanation. And like a typical salesman, he gives you the full answer. Uh, you ask me a question, I'll give you the long answer. I always do because I think it's important to know everything. Drudy does a similar thing. He likes to give you everything he's thinking on the graphic, which is awesome. Um, so basically, I'll let Drudy talk and I'll comment as we go. But first uh, graphic is the Corsair X Haga. The Haga design. The Haga design is something I made uh, a lot of years ago for my friend Haga. And uh, it's a classic racing design. Flames and the design of the snow uh, as a background. That was the concept, hot and cold. Uh, the flames uh, are a typical uh, racing and motorcycle war design. Uh, we make it in a good way many years ago and that makes that helmet classic. Uh, on the back there is the cartoon of Aga and uh, nothing to say, is a, is a lucky design and uh, we are considering for the future to make a kind of restyling of that helmet uh, with flames uh, to be repurposed on the market, but with a different uh, graphical approach. But that's for the future, maybe in two years. So the hog is done? Excellent. All right, so the next one, I can't really see the screen. It's the uh, Tatsuki, uh, Tatsuki, Tatsuki Frost. 
the Tatsuki Frost. Tatsuki Frost is the replica of uh, Tatsuki Suzuki, that is a rider Moto3 uh, team Simoncelli, squadra corse 58. Uh, but that is not important because the rider is not so famous, but uh, the design is uh, a classical uh, uh, tattoo style helmet. But it's curious to know that uh, the front of that helmet is modern with uh, a kind of uh, modern texture on black with the uh, fluorescent yellow and red to the top red and around the visor the yellow fluo that are attention colors. And, uh, and on the back, the tattoo style with the dragon and the two fishes that uh, are meaning good luck. So uh, it's a kind of uh, special balance between a classic tattoo design and something really modern and stylish. All right, so I'm always going to preface this. I would have to remind everyone that obviously the helmets look so much better in person. Uh, they always do, no matter what we do for photography, spins. We got a new camera, we got a new uh, photo tube, and backdrops. We're experimenting. So some of the darker details are lost. So again, when you see these things in person or in the still shots, you'll see a little more detail. Uh, in the past, we tried to show the helmets in the camera, but it tends to mess with the green screen. But you'll never see the true awesomeness of the helmet until you see it in person. So I always like to let people know that they will look so much better in person. But this helmet is just wicked cool. It's got great detail. I think you'll, uh, you'll, you'll love it. And uh, the last two helmets were actually in inventory or in stock. Uh, they have been for a few months. They've been sold out at least twice. So it's one of those things where they come and go very fast, especially given the climate. So keep that in mind. Uh, the next is the Corsair RSW Trico. Basically, this is the non-racer replica. We always put one non-racer replica in the Corsair for the folks who want the top helmet in a non-racer replica. They just want something that's colorful and just cool. So here's this one. RSW helmet. That is uh, um, not a replica. Is uh, is a racing design, aggressive, but with style not so typical as a replica of a rider. For example, the Johnny Rhea helmet, or Johnny Ray helmet. Sorry, sorry for my English. I know it's, it's, uh, it's not so good. I hope you understand me. But that one is um, aggressive uh, with a lot of colors, uh, racing feeling, but not a replica. Uh, we have two color combination, uh, one with the yellow and green fluo on black. That is, mm, in a way, the word of monster. So uh, are colors that are well accepted from the market because uh, they have a race, racing meaning. Uh, the other one is a classic black, dark gray, fluo red and white. That is the, the, the classic color combination for uh, a racing helmet. And that is on the top uh, of the Arai shells. Really interesting with style, uh, elegant, uh, but at the same time sporty. Uh, I think it's a good exercise of style. All right, awesome. And then the next generation is the flag series. It's been a while since we've come out with the flag. Uh, the newer ones are a little bit uh, different uh, than the previous ones, which were much more flag-like. Uh, these are definitely a little bit more out there, a little bit more, uh, as, uh, as Rudy will say, broken. So take a look. Flag UK and Flag Italy. The flag is uh, a classic uh, Arai graphical items uh, in the past collection. We had many different version of the flag helmet. That one is uh, more modern than the other one. The other one with the flags uh, uh, was a, a, a kind of classic design. That one is more modern with uh, patterns of colors, uh, but in a, in a, let me say, in, in a confusion, in, in a confused way, 
but the the reference of the colors that's are meaning f the, the 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 national flag the italian one is red on one side green on the other side with some black but with white in the middle and that is our flag the other one is with the with the union jack left and right side metallic gray base and blue patterns with the uh, red stripes, and that is the UK flag. The news is, uh, as I said, that uh, is, a, is a different approach, is more modern, but uh, the, the graphical elements, the flag, is still uh, recognizable. So that will be one interesting element. One suggestion for your market, as we talk with, uh, with your importers, um, is possible for me uh, if you think can, that can be a success on market, uh, to create with this kind of feeling, with this kind of mood, also one US version. So if you agree, uh, please don't hesitate to, to ask me to create one US flag array helmet. All right, and as every good salesman knows, you got to give a pitch, right? You got to try and drum, drum up more business for uh, more graphics. So, we thought about not showing this one because we didn't want to necessarily open the Pandora's box of, hey, do we want to add another graphic that isn't in the system? But feedback, we want to know your feedback. You're the guys who are out there. You want to tell us what you want. Would an American flag version be something you guys want to see? Let us know. No promises, no guarantees. But if there's interest, maybe Judy will pen us a. Uh, uh, an artist rendering, we can show it, get a vote, and see if we can bring it out to market. Notoriously, the American flag is kind of one of those things where yes, no, it's kind of, you know, it's a cool concept, they always look good, but a lot of people necessarily, uh, it, it's difficult to commit to that uh, in a helmet graphic. Um, I also want to point out, I just realized that if you look at the back of some of these helmets and they have a name that's unfamiliar to you, this helmet was actually on the Profile V, which is a model in Europe. Uh, because it was painted in Europe on a European shell, it came with that European model name. Of course, it will come on an American model, which on this case, it's a Signet X. So don't get confused. Uh, don't worry. You're going to get the U.S. version. Uh, if you're in the U.S., buy the U.S. version. Do not buy models from overseas. They don't necessarily have the same certification that are required in a given market. In the United States, it's DOT. So... Uh, always try and buy in the market. Actually, always do buy in the market. Anyone who buys out of market, you run the risk of having a non-certified helmet. For a given market, you can get a ticket. That's my public uh, awareness notice there for that. And this one is way cool. We always uh, we, we question whether we're going to do this one or not. It's pretty far outside the box, but every once in a while you need something exciting to get people's attention. The candy on the wall to draw you to the shelf. A lot of people love to look at it. Most don't buy it. Most people look at all the cool colors and in the end, they go for something a little more traditional that's more universal to fit more than one bike. But the, uh, the jungle, the original jungle was out there back in the day. It was way ahead of its time. The jungle too is equally out there. But I think there's a group of people that might actually like it. So take a look at New jungle. jungle. This is a lucky design that had a, a really nice success in the past. Um, I remember I introduced it a few years ago. There was no request uh, about this kind of design, but it uh, was a good success. So we are now proposing you the new jungle that is a mix of different styles from the five continents uh, in the world. So US, uh, America from the front with the raccoon, aggressive raccoon, funny but aggressive. Uh, in front of the mouth, there is the, the flower, Japanese flower, lotus flower. Uh, there are animals from the jungle, uh, one lizard and, and one bird. Um, the, the one really small and so fast, you know. Uh, in Italy, we call it CC. I don't know, I don't know the name in, in English. And um, we have Aboriginal design from Australia with many colors. Um, and the, the sign of, the, of, of a, a corner in a circuit. And the background uh, is uh, with the texture of the Rinascimento Italiano, the Renaissance, is, uh, is something from the past. 
is a classic uh, texture of uh, textile um, from Italy, and uh, that is our culture. One interesting thing, one more time, there is the Arai logo with different colors and with a really big size. The big size of the logo have not to make you afraid because uh, managed in that way, the logo is a part of the, of the graphics. It's not the application, uh, classic application, front, left and right side of the helmet of the Arai logo, but is a part of the design. Uh, that is uh, another another uh, news for this collection. I hope you like it because uh, you know uh, it's not easy that helmet. But uh, try to think. Uh, you can propose it uh, with naked bike, um, one color bike, for example, black or dark gray, or but with a, with a black jacket black leather jacket and this kind of helmet that is, uh, is funny with a lot of colors. Only the helmet and maybe the sneakers on, in, in the food. That is the new jungle proposal. All right, so cool. That's out there. And if you look at the screen right now, the, uh, the, the art on top of the front, it's a pretty angry raccoon. Uh, so if you, not everyone caught that. It's, uh, it's pretty in your face, so I like to always point that out because in some photographs it's not very obvious. I'm also going to say a few things while I'm here. If you see my eyes darting around, I'm looking at the TV behind the camera, to, and I'm looking at the graphic because sometimes I pick up things I don't normally see. And I'm going to answer a couple of questions because I actually do have access to the questions now in another TV. Um, David, you asked if uh, 2021 Isle of Man. Sorry, buddy, they canceled the event, so they're not going to do a helmet. So basically, we're going to push it off until 2022 when Isle of Man is official and they give us the go ahead. We're going to work with them on making it 2022. So unfortunately, 2021, we're going to miss. I hate it. I had a lot of people interested. We were looking forward to it. It's not going to happen. So somebody also kick in and asking about um, a energy drink sponsored helmet at an affordable price. One, affordable is not an option. Two, not all energy drinks even do allow branding. Uh, and David actually answered his question. I appreciate that, David. Uh, also, question of the RSW not being on the website. The website, we usually add graphics to the website when it's about to land to market within 30 days because we don't want to create too much demand for something that's not here, especially in the given um, climate of delivery. Not only is production delayed uh, a little bit because of uh, employment and just getting materials and getting things out, containers are hard to find and container ships are hard to get space on. So it's really difficult to produce and deliver helmets. So unfortunately, when that's the world we live in. <clears throat> um, there was another question here that I don't, oh, I'm sorry, but on the website, that's what I meant to say. Uh, if you look at the homepage on the website, we actually have a live flipbook version of our brochure, which you can actually flip through the pages. And within the pages, you will see all the graphics, including the RSW. Uh, and there are links within the flipbook that go in deeper into the website on specifics. We haven't tied the 360 spins yet, um, but we will. There are also details about the fitting, options, accessories, and details as far as the helmet construction. So it helps you go deeper into the website from a given model and or graphic. It's still not 100% where we want it. The, all the links aren't there, but have a look at it. It's really cool. It's kind of just looking at a live magazine, and it does show the new graphics. But again, when you see a graphic hit the website on the page, that means it's pretty close to market. And then I got a couple of yays for the uh, U.S. flag, so that's awesome. We appreciate the feedback. We will let the powers that be know, uh, the importers and the dealers, and if there's enough uh, wholesale demand, we will definitely put a, an effort into getting it there. Uh, let's see, when is this helmet going to become in the Asian market? I'm not sure. I believe the uh, jungle is in production. I believe it is, in fact, close to shipping to the U.S., therefore it should be in the Asian market before it gets here because proximity, you're closer. So don't, you know, count on it. I only run and cover the North and South American market, Canada down to Brazil. Outside of that, I don't know too much. They don't tell me too much. I only have so much bandwidth, so I can't store too much information, so I have to focus on what I know. So the Asian market is, is similar but different. You're going to have to reach out, uh, go to the uh, 
Asian specific market for your territory or the Japanese, the aride.com website, and hopefully they'll give you some direction. Uh, you can even ask a question. Hopefully they can help you out. Uh, also, I appreciate somebody complimenting me in my English. It is my first language, so I appreciate that. Uh, anyway, let's move forward unless there's another question. Uh, nope. All right, cool. Let's move forward on the next one. Um, so this is cool. This is the, uh, the, what's the name on this one? It's not even tagged. Block. The block design. It's got every color in the rainbow, so there's only going to be one version of this one. So check out the block. Interesting. The MX helmet, uh, the one we call block. Really interesting. I, I trust a lot on that. Is something that we want to propose to the market, and uh, I hope you you can trust on that graphical approach, because we take some suggestion from the world of the sneaker shoes, and uh, as you can see, uh, is a good balance of uh, color patterns. Few of those colors are pastel colors, and uh, that is the news. Working in the world of races, um, I am uh, managing for many riders uh, the introduction of those colors. And um, that will be, for the future, the new wave in terms of, uh, of colors. And um, the, the pastel are mixed with the fluo colors, aggressive. So it's a good balance. Um, I cannot explain the the sign of the of the, the graphical sign on the helmet because uh, is a uh, one more time a kind of uh, confusion but one balanced confusion uh, so um, i think that in movement the helmet uh, can be nice and the introduction of those colors will be good for the future i also make a proposal to arai to introduce the same concept also on a full face helmet. Usually uh, people choose a helmet that can mesh well with the color of the motorcycle. But in the future will be different. I think the helmet is something completely, to be considered completely separated from, from the motorcycle or the jacket. The helmet is the helmet. And a uh, few of the people, few of the customers, they can uh, appreciate that, uh, that concept and maybe they can choose it. In the world of MX, everything is more easy because there is a heavy rotation of the graphics and the colors are well, well accepted. Uh, so that's why this kind of proposal. But please consider also to have the same coloring on a full face helmet is for a young target. And um, as I said, the, the reference is uh, the sneakers world. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're kind of at the mercy of the camera and the exposure. So that helmet had quite a bit of bright colors in different ranges of the spectrum. So the camera's trying to balance it all. So the yellows and the pinks were fighting. You'll notice that the chin strap rivet was painted over, so don't expect that in production. It will be a chin strap rivet that's exposed. But keep in mind, again, the colors will pop in real life, and they might be slightly different than what you see on the camera, but they will be bright. They will be in your face. Um, so always keep that with a grain of salt, but it will look better in person. Trust me, they always do. Even when we're Thinking the helmet's okay, when it comes out, we're always amazed. I even us, we see the, the painted uh, samples, which are hand done, which are amazing. They're able to reproduce it and make it look better in production, which is always amazing to me. Oh, okay, guys. I'm gonna jump back, I wanted to quick, before I let Drew his sign off, two things. Did you guys catch the two stroke in the background? In one of those com com uh, comments, it was actually pretty cool. Jeff loves hearing the two stroke scooter run down the street while Drew was talking. And then we're gonna do Drew a little sign off, a little face to the name. Uh, just kind of a send off, a hey, thanks for watching kind of a thing. It's just really cool to have him give us that feedback when we ask, put it together really quick for us. We really appreciate that. So again, if you guys uh, like this content, we'll do it more. Uh, anything else you want to do, let us know. After this, we're going to do some other graphics that were not done by Drudy, but we want to let you know and see them. So take a look and see what Drudy has to say. Okay, guy. That's all, and uh, I hope you understand me because uh, for sure I can talk uh, better in Italiano. 
uh, but those are our idea for your market and I hope you enjoy it and um, if you have any kind of request please give it to the guys of the US importers from Arai and then we can develop something special for you. Thank you very much guy, have fun, ciao from Italy. So awesome, appreciate that for Dirty. I uh, want to check, make a comment. Spani asked about a sit up and bag helmet, you know, kind of a Street Fighter helmet. Uh, the um, Renegade was a, a few years ago. The Defiant series has been our Street Fighter kind of helmet. It's definitely not as Street Fighter esque as some might like. A little more uh, in the middle there, but it's basically for an Arai rider who wants a little more attitude, but not quite the other side of it. We do have another model that we're thinking about bringing to this market. However, Price point, price point, price point. People want what they want and they want it for the price they want to pay. And unfortunately, niche markets don't always uh, work for us because the price we have to charge for our helmets, which are first and foremost about protection, um, trends and style are important, but they're not what we seek. So we're look looking to make a helmet to be protective regardless of what you're riding or even how fast you're riding. So our helmets are going to be expensive because they offer the same protection. A Corsair or our Classic V open face ventilated mod, uh, modern retro helmet, they do the same performance as far as protection for your head. Totally different helmets, totally different styles, different markets, different riding, but they offer the same protection. Same thing with our street fighter and our sport riding or our racing or our touring or our adventure touring or our motocross. All of those helmets are designed to protect first and foremost. So if you're willing to pay the price, we're going to bring a helmet to the market that will address that niche. It may not be as deep as you want to go. We will never put an internal drop-down shade in a helmet. Why? Because it takes away from the helmet's performance. So I'm digressing. I'm getting off target. I do that a lot. So I'm going to continue on with, the, um, with the, uh, the, the graphics. When we finish up, Andrew's going to do his dog and pony show on how to uh, properly disassemble, wash, and then reassemble your helmet. And then afterwards, if you guys have any more questions, we're going to jump into those as well, unless I see one, and then I will answer it again, or answer it as we go. So here's the Corsair X Kianari Trico. Very cool. The original Kianari was kind of a, a subtle two-tone, three-tone. It was black, white, and a little bit of gold. Uh, it's a frost finish, so it's really kind of cool. Very soft, dry brush stroke effect. Um, the Dragon's just wicked cool. The details are really neat. I love this helmet. It's awesome. Um, so again, if you want kind of a universal but bright and a little red, white, and blue theme, red, white is always the number one seller. Blue is a really nice accent, and I think they really did a nice combination in this design. Um, so the Corsair X Cunari Trico Frost, I believe it's already been in market. We may have already sold out through the first shipment, so if you're struggling to find it, uh, keep looking. And if you do find it, like I said, you know, take it, because it might be a while before the next one comes along. The Corsair X KR2. Uh, it's been a while since we've been a Keddy Roberts Senior graphic. Uh, this one's really cool. Um, it throws back to the original Eagle, but a little more detail. It's not just the beak. It's got, you know, some actual detail to the beak, um, the eyes, the angle. It's got bright yellow, of course, with the um, blacked out stars and stripes in the background. Some gold, you know, pinstriping. It's just really kind of a cool looking helmet. Looks totally different from the back than it does from the front. I actually saw a picture of it from the back once and I didn't know what it was. Um, so it's really cool, bright, but really kind of classy. And the Nakagami 3, super cool helmet. Uh, we never anticipated this helmet to be as big as, as it has been. Nakagami spent some time in Spain, saw stained glass in a church, uh, talked with designer YF Designs and said, hey, can you incorporate stained glass somehow into my next design? So it's got some flowers. Every color in the rainbow, cool pinstripes, some fading, and of course, uh, some stylized version of stained glass. It is super cool. It's even better in person, as all the graphics are. Uh, this one has come and gone three times. I, mean, I think there's been three shipments that have come and sold out. It, it is almost impossible to find. If you find it, you're lucky. Um, but it's just super cool. It's one of those things where, again, I wouldn't have thought, I think it's pretty, but I wouldn't have thought it would, would have been as big as it is. So it just goes to show you that uh, sometimes... Some graphics that are out there really do really well, uh, better than we ever expect. The Kumi Frost, this one really actually surprised everyone. It's pretty. I mean, it's, it's a frost color. It's got a lot of red. It's very blocky. It's got some stripes, some points to it. But 
we didn't expect it to be quite as big as it has turned out to be. Uh, every graphic for a racer replica that we do, we always insist that the helmet design sell on its own. The racer is a supporting factor. He actually helps promote it and helps sell the helmet. You get up to superstar level, we make helmets for you and they sell because of who you are. We start graphics with the younger riders because it's a cool graphic and as he grows, as he becomes more famous, he can help promote it. This helmet is like a perfect example of, wow, it just hit the market on its own and, and it's running and as he gets more famous, it's just going to help it even more. So again, this graphic is surprising. It's really pretty in person as, again, they all are, but it's just really a nice design, clean, uh, universal. Um, so again, if you find one, you're a lucky man, Charlie Brown, trademark. Uh, Quantum X Steel Blue. Uh, this is actually a really cool design. Uh, basically, it's got a brush steel effect uh, on the background. You can kind of see it here. It's a little blown out in some of the light spots, but it actually is a really nice uh, subtle background with the nice, you know, I wouldn't say super deep blue, but not bright either. Uh, it's a really nice blue. Um, probably one of the few blues that we have that is very blue centric. Uh, there isn't any other contrast in color. Uh, there's a second version of this, the red version, which I believe is on this spin or second spin. There we go. Um, the red version, of course, uh, being, you know, red is the most universal color of all, but it's a really pretty effect. The brush stroke looks just absolutely handmade. It looks like it's hand painted. Uh, so it's surprising again how good these things look in person. I believe these steels have been uh, in the market already, right? They are here. They're not here. They're coming. Okay. So again, if it's on the website, uh, if, it's a, if it's in the flip book, that's, uh, that, that's the brochure. If it's in the website in the Quantum X field, then you know it's coming within 30 days. And the next, the VX Pro Force Stanton. This thing has just been huge. We kind of did it on a whim. Uh, Justin Barsha wanted to do something nice for Jeff Stanton. Jeff Stanton had trained Justin for a few years, and they were coming up to a local Supercross event uh, near Jeff's hometown. So he wanted to do something cool. So we had a modern retro version of Jeff's last replica that was back on the MXC Pro. Um, and we mocked it up and put it in full livery with uh, his sponsor and the race was canceled. Unfortunately, he couldn't ride it. Uh, we had the helmet already done. Um, so we had it, Justin had it, and then he wore it at one of the qualifiers at a later event. And then we introduced it and we had Jeff and Justin on the live stream and we introduced it kind of officially to, just, uh, to um, Jeff. Now Jeff had already seen the event, he saw him wearing the helmet, so he knew it existed, which I was kind of bummed about. I really wanted to surprise him. But he was thrilled that it was brought back because it's been a while since he's been in the limelight. Um, but it's an absolutely stunning graphic. It's just super bright, super clean. There's only going to be one version of it, as far as I know, for now. Uh, this is an actual paint sample, so you'll notice there's some thickness or, or texture to the graphic. The final production actually has a little bit of feel to it, but it's not nearly as tactile as you will uh, that this, this uh, video might uh, suggest. But it is a huge success. People are just going you know, ape about this helmet. So again, motocross is a fairly small segment of our market. Uh, we don't usually have a lot of inventory of some of the cooler graphics. So I'm expecting the first shipment of these helmets, which I believe are on the water as we speak. Um, if you see it and you want it, please get it. I really hate when people call me saying I can't find it. I saw it, but then I couldn't get it. You know, of course, I want to sell more helmets. But honestly, truly, if you find it, buy it because it's going to be far and few between for the next few months as we get deeper and deeper into the summer. And then this is the uh, final graphic. This is the Resolute. This is the Resolute. Um, pretty cool, pretty bright, nice and clean, uh, sharp lines, good colors. Um, the pinstripe is really kind of neat how it pops off the background. There's only going to be two versions of this helmet. There'll be the yellow one that we see here. And then there's going to be, oh, I jumped the gun there. See, Shh, don't pay attention to that. Let's try this again. All right. There'll be two versions of this. I forgot about that. We don't have the red version um, in an actual painted helmet. We only have the CG image. So actually on our website, uh, when it pops up or on the brochure, you're going to see the yellow and full photograph of an actual painted helmet. Then you'll see a uh, artist rendering of the red version. So there'll be two of those uh, for now. Uh, if there more demand for other colors pops up, and uh, we can put into production, we can, of course. 
And then here is the Corsarec Daytona 200 Pole Award. Uh, we, we basically mocked up a special Russell replica. Russell is obviously, as you know, Mr. Daytona. So we mocked up a special one-off with his last replica graphic on a, a titanium gray frost background that actually was borrowed from the Maverick uh, graphic, uh, which looks super cool. Uh, there's been talk about making it into production. In fact, it's in production in, in a few Asian markets. They saw our prototype and liked it so much they ordered it in, ahead of us, which I'm not happy about. It was our idea. We should have had it first, right? If you guys like this and you think it's something that we should do, we've put it out to our distributors and some dealers and some sales reps and say, hey, what do you think? If there's enough demand, we can put it together. Helmet exists. We just have to create the part numbers and create the orders. So if you guys like it, let us know. And this one is super cool. Uh, Kaya Day, right, Andrew? Kaya Day. Very cool. It doesn't exist yet. It was a special one-off exclusive for an imported distributor in the Japanese market. Wicked cool paper, or it could be cloth, uh, traditional Japanese uh, umbrella um, with the uh, Japanese maple? Japanese maple. Japanese maple. Okay. And of course, on this side, you got that cool textured uh, silver background. The, the maple leaves, the pinstripes, then you've got this, this wicked cool asymmetrical uh, parasol, if you will, on, this, on the right side. Super cool. It's a very cool helmet. Uh, we've been told it would be made available to us. It probably won't be a huge seller, but it's super cool for somebody who wants something unique and different and you don't want to see yourself coming down the road. That's the helmet for you. Um, the white is, a, I believe, a very light pearlescent white background. So it's just really exudes class, if you will. And uh, I, I was going to kind of resist saying that. We'll have to see. But part of the exclusivity of that helmet was they, uh, they contracted for a tan interior. It's a soft brown, almost like a saddle tan interior, which is really, really cool. Uh, we're not sure if that's going to be something that would come, but I would push for it because it sets the helmet off on its own little, little segment, if you will. So it's just super cool. If you guys like it, let us know. No promises. It may or may not come in. Maybe somebody will choose or agree to bring it in in limited uh, edition quantities just to satisfy those of us who want to be unique and different and don't want to see ourselves coming down the road. So with that, that's the 2021 graphic line of newer uh, models. It's not 100%. I believe we might have missed one or two. If we did, we apologize. But going forward, we're going to start doing a little unboxing ourselves, kind of like some of the channels do. We're not going to do it ahead of anyone. We don't want to take the thunder away from any uh, dealerships or sales uh, force that are out there trying to get a jump on uh, the demand and the interest. But we're going to do some unveilings and go into some details about graphics and, and some of the details that others don't necessarily go into. So we'll try and pick that up as well uh, and go forward. Um, so I'm going to basically hand it off to Andrew, let him do the uh, disassembly, wash techniques and ideas. We don't have a big sink with water, so it's not going to be an actual presentation. It's just going to go along with the online video that he had done previously to give you a little more insight. Following that, I'm going to come back and we'll answer some more questions. All right, Andrew. Alrighty. Hello, folks. My name is Andrew and uh, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of helmet disassembly and helmet cleaning. Before I jump in, I just want to mention that uh, regarding new graphics, you can see them on our website and a really great way to see when a graphic is coming or announced is also to sign up for our email newsletter. You can sign up for that uh, just on our website. There's a little link on there on the bottom. Sign up for that email newsletter and we'll let you know when new graphics are coming, when helmet spins are available and you can kind of get the uh, first look or the inside line at taking a look at new graphics. So with helmet cleaning, uh, let's say for example, it's springtime now, you open up your Arai helmet bag and you take out your Arai helmet. This one's nice and clean, but uh, your helmet may not be clean. So we're gonna tell you how to take it apart, just kind of in general, and then also how to clean it. So really for cleaning, we recommend warm water and a microfiber towel. In general, just with the helmet, you don't want to use anything abrasive, you don't wanna use any cleaners. So. Um, Things like uh, paint thinner, those are out. Things like, uh, you know, spray cleaners, those are out. Things like, um, you know, anything that can, anything that's abrasive, any chemical stuff like that, you don't want to use that. That's going to damage uh, some of the components of the helmet. It's going to damage the plastic components, degrade them over time. You may not see damage right away, but over time it is weakening these parts. So you definitely don't want to do that. 
Uh, when you do your annual cleaning, it's a great time to look at the helmet and just kind of check it for damage too. Uh, so while you do your cleaning, you can also take a look, see if everything is okay on the helmet, anything merits replacement. Again, uh, helmet, pretty important part of your, uh, your equipment, pretty important part of your gear when you're riding, so you do want to uh, just take a look at it every now and then. So as I said, warm water and a microfiber towel, those, that's your principal way to clean the helmet. For the exterior, you can uh, basically clean it with warm water, and then for any spots that are difficult, for example, you get a lot of bugs on the forehead of the helmet, just take your microfiber towel, uh, run it in warm water, and then set that on the helmet. You can let that sit for a while, come back, and it'll be super easy to get all that, all that gunk off the helmet. Uh, let's start taking this apart. So I'm going to use, this is a Corsair X as an example helmet. Uh, your helmet may be different. For example, you might have a Quantum X or a Signet X, which is very similar in construction to this. Uh, you may have a DTX, for example, which does not come with the chin curtain, or you may have a Vector 2, for example, where the neck roll is not removable. So your exact application is going to be different. We have two cleaning videos on our YouTube channel, Arai Americas, and you can check that for uh, closer shots and kind of tight shots of particular models with particular assemblies, but we just want to run through it in general for you. So again, for the outside, warm water and a microfiber towel. Soak the towel, let it sit for any spots that are tough. And then, for example, you can take the, remove the shield. Uh, shield is always good to clean because that's important for visibility. But you can also take off, for example, the holders and you can get down underneath to the base plates here. So these are the base plates, they hold on to the shield. Uh, they have two little screws, so you can undo these screws. You can take the entire base plate off. Really good to do that, to clean this entire mechanism. Again, just with warm water and a microfiber towel. Put the whole thing back together and you can get the, uh, the shield and the visibility and get that all back up to, uh, to good, sta good status. One thing, just uh, while we have the shield off, the front of the helmet has the rubber eye port gasket. This rubber eye port gasket, sometimes it's good to lubricate it. We have this tiny little Silicone lubricant comes with the helmet. If you don't have it, that's okay. We can mail one out to you uh, if you contact us through our website. But basically this little guy is going to lubricate this rubber eye port gasket. And that's a good thing to do. You don't have to do it all the time. Uh, once per season is fine. Maybe more if you use the helmet a lot or you're in dry conditions. But after you clean the helmet with water, it's good to kind of run over that eye port gasket. And that's gonna help and make sure that your shield closes nice and gently and smoothly and completely over the eye port gasket. So onto the interior now, it's gonna be a little tricky for you to see, but basically we're gonna take out the cheek pads and I believe pretty much all of our helmets, except for some of the car helmets, all the helmets, the cheek pads will pop out. So these are always good to take out. And the cheek pads too, since they contact your face, they're gonna have uh, probably the majority of sweat and stuff. Cheek pads usually, actually pretty much all motorcycle, they have removable covers. So you can very easily Remove the cheek pad cover. Uh, you can machine wash this, but generally for the interior components, we recommend washing by hand. Uh, for the interior too, warm water is best, but if you really want to, you can use a little bit of very mild baby shampoo and wash all of the components by hand. Especially for the cheek pads, they have a uh, EPS back, this white foam here. You don't wanna crack that, you don't wanna wreck that. If you machined wash this, it would probably get wrecked, so again, uh, hand washing is best. Interior components, for example, neck roll pops out on the Corsair X, this guy is removable. So you just wash this by hand, make sure you dry it thoroughly. And also you can get the chin curtain out. You can get the one, two. You can tell this is a fresh one. You can get the headliner out. All these components again, wash by hand, a little bit of baby shampoo and make sure to rinse thoroughly before putting any of the components back in. Last thing you wanna do is wash all of this and put it back in wet, because then you might have trouble down the road. So you really wanna make sure everything air dries out of direct sunlight and everything is dried completely. Um, usually room temperature is fine. You don't have to, you know, don't bake it, don't cook it or anything. Uh, and just make sure all the components are nice and dry before getting them back in. So once you have the helmet, once you have the helmet kind of down to its guts, um, for example, the front of the helmet, the chin liner pad here, this guy does not come out. So you just, you know, just leave that there. No need to rip that out. But once you have the helmet down to its guts, you can actually submerge the entire thing in water. 
So we recommend take the entire helmet and you can actually dunk it in water or rinse it through. That way you can get through the ventilation holes. You can get through kind of all the, all the nastiness that builds up over time. Rinse that all out of the helmet. And then of course the helmet, you want to let it air dry. Um, don't cook it, don't bake it, don't apply heat to it. Uh, don't uh, like a hair dryer, nothing like that. Want to avoid direct heat sources like that. Just let it air dry naturally. Uh, you can put a gentle fan on it. And again, do not dry in direct sunlight. You want to keep it out of that sunlight. Make sure that it's uh, nice and protected. This is the advice for uh, getting the most out of your helmet and keeping things, keeping things nice and clean and also not damaging anything in the process. Um, other than that, basically reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. So you could take all these components, put them back in, and for example, <clears throat> while you have the helmet apart, while you're cleaning it, you may notice that you don't have some accessories or you're looking for some accessories. Let's say, for example, you notice that you may want the DFX2 uh, clear, the little spoiler here. So you can clean up the helmet. And when you're applying new things like an accessory, for example, all these accessories are held by double-sided tape. Uh, you can clean the shell just with a touch of uh, rubbing alcohol. Just give it a little spot there to make sure the shell is nice and clean and then stick on your components like that. Again, all ventilation, all ducts are meant to be frangible. They're meant to break off. So the Arai helmet returns to its round and smooth shape, has the maximum performance for glancing off in the event of an impact. So that's why everything is stuck on with double-sided tape. And another good reason to avoid cleaners and stuff, which might kind of wreck and get into that double-sided tape. So we don't want to do that. So that's the, uh, those are the principles of uh, helmet cleaning. Again, uh, we have YouTube videos which show a lot more detail, a lot more tight shots and close-ups on, for example, how to get the chin curtain out and stuff like that. But otherwise, if you have questions on cleaning in general, uh, we are live, so you can just ask us and we can answer anything that, uh, that comes our way. So with that, I'm going to end my segment and back to Brian and any questions. So anyway, Andrew gave me a chance to get more coffee, so that's good. Always, always need coffee in the morning. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions that came up while I, I was gone. Uh, RX-7V racing helmet, that it's in Europe. As it becomes required, we may make it available here in the United States, but because it's not a mainstream requirement for racing, it's difficult to have another helmet in the market uh, in direct competition with the Corsair X, which is... Uh, our current race helmet. And again, all our helmets can be raced in. Uh, they're all up to that level. Of course, open face and motocross and adventure touring, you don't want to go on the racetrack and go 150 miles an hour. It's not a good thing. But Corsair, uh, Signet, Quantum, Regent, those are all fine to go racing with. The race FIM helmet, again, if it becomes uh, more required or there's a larger call for it, we can make it available. It's just not happened yet. It's just not mainstream for us quite yet. Um, second question that I saw, the Rapide Neo. That was kind of the one I kind of referenced a little bit about the niche or niche, if you will, um, upright, you know, aggressive riding stance. Um, we have the choice between that and the Defiant. And when you look at the market and the segment that that was in, all the helmets that were in that segment were very low cost. Uh, and as I said before, our helmets are anything but low cost because we're trying to make protection, not just a market uh, segment helmet. So we chose the Defiant because it had some ag aggressive look to it, but it was still mainstream Arai. It was still an Arai helmet for the people who want different style, but still want an Arai helmet. There has been a call for the Neo to come into the United States, and we're considering it. But again, the price is still a point. I know we'll sell to the core Arai guys, the people who want to be super comfortable. They want to be ventilated because that helmet even though it has no external vents on it, is fully ventilated. You want to know how? You know, go look at the Classic V. That kind of gives you an insight into it. Um, but it comes at a cost, and I know we'll sell some to those core riders, and I'd love to bring it to you, but it just may not justify the amount of investment to certify that helmet for this market. So that's what we're trying to play with. Is there enough demand for that price in that segment to justify certifying the helmet for the US DOT Snell certification? If there is enough demand, if we can convince um, those who order our helmets to do so, we can, of course, make it happen. But we only have so many resources, and trying to spool up production for the helmets that already exist right now is paramount. That's what we're focusing on. So I appreciate that, that question. We get a lot of phone calls about it. We have a lot of dealers asking about it. It's just one of those things where we're at a tipping point. We need a little more 
uh, push to get us over the edge to make this thing move forward. But for now, we're considering it. We're just not there yet. Uh, are you going to make an updated version of the CKX kids carding helmet? Eventually. Um, it's such a good helmet, right? I mean, the CK6 has been out for a while, but it's such a good helmet. It, changing it for the sake of changing it is something that a ride doesn't do. The helmet functions wonderfully. It's super light. It fits great. It does what it's supposed to do. Most people that get them ride them in white. They, they race them in white. They sometimes don't even take the stickers off of them. However, we always like to bring all the helmets up along with, uh, with the generational changes. GP6 has, always, has been our mainstay auto helmet for 10 years. We just upgraded to the GP7. The SK6, which is the karting helmet, and the CK6, which is the kids' karting helmet, eventually we <coughs> eventually will upgrade to the 7 Series. It just takes a little bit of time because, again, we've got to get over this hump of production uh, limitations. So look for it. CK's been out for a while, still a great helmet, but we know eventually we have to change it and upgrade it, and we will. Um, don't know what's on the horizon. Keep in mind, we have Corsair X. Uh, that's our mainstay in the, in the States. It's got to be upgraded. The XD has to be upgraded. The, um, the, the motocross helmet has to be upgraded. We just had a couple of new helmets. The Ram and the Classic V came out. Uh, the Defiant either needs to be upgraded or you know, we'll see what happens there. So in the grand scheme of things, there's so much going on just for this market. Now take into account the Japanese market and the European market and the other Asian markets and the Australian market. There's so many different things going on that we don't know about, that we can't ever know about. So we have to kind of keep our place in line and realize that we're not the only ones. I wish we were, because then we get a little more attention, right? But in the grand scheme, we're always trying to bring new things as soon as possible. So we will as soon as possible. I appreciate that question. Um, the Russell, a couple of people love the Russell. Uh, I think that's a general consensus. We just have to see about getting enough momentum to bring it into the market itself. Uh, Kaya Day, a bunch of you guys love the Kaya Day, which is awesome. I love it too. Um, again, uh, we'll see. Uh, I think it has a place here, uh, and it would be really neat to just bring it in as a one-shot wonder and see just let those who want it get it, and those who missed it lament the fact that they missed it, right? Uh, black and blue doing too. God, they're doing lots keeps running and running. In Europe, it's just a little engine that could. Every time they bring out a Duin, it just sells like crazy. It doesn't do as well here, but Duin was truly iconic in Europe. He was pretty big here, but in Europe, there was, you know, no comparison. So every once in a while, we do bring back a Duin version. We had a TT recently. Um, so it's possible it'll come back again, but it's one of those things where we're still in that hole of producing what we can. As soon as we have time to bring things back or bring new things in, um, we'll definitely try and uh, bring a new version or an updated version of that helmet or maybe even just a full-blown retro, you know, one of the better or more popular versions of his graphic uh, to try and hit that mark. Uh, anything else, Black Blue Duo and Kaya Day? I like it, like it, date. Wow. QNR Chico Frost looks good. All right. Well, I think that's about it. If you guys don't have any other questions on graphics specifics, model specifics, or cleaning, let us know. Andrew showed you guys the new uh, backpack helmet bag. That bag does, in fact, have hidden backpack straps on the bottom side, so you can actually, when you're walking around, wherever you get to, throw your helmet in the back and walk around. You don't have to carry it. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> Andrew's showing you it on the other camera, and you, you can't see it. So anyway, so you've got this hidden pocket in the back that these basically tuck into. So you can basically carry it without the straps or the backpack straps to carry your helmet or whatever you want um, when you're wherever you get to go. Uh, it comes with the double shield pouch inside, which this one does not have, but you can fit two shields. The padding is on all six sides, top sides, front, back, and the bottom. So it actually has quite a bit of protection. It's not just one of those soft, fuzzy, thin bags that you can fold flat and mail in an envelope. It does fold and ship flat uh, easier than it did in the past. And it's got the giant logos. We ran these logos for race support, for promotional use on 100 of the last production of bags we produced. Everyone wanted this bag with the logos, and we just didn't have enough. So on this last production, they all came with the logos. So for those of you who don't want the logo, I'm sorry. The, logos are all, the logo lists, bags are all gone. But we do have these in stock. They're on the website. They are extremely affordable for what they represent. 
the protection they offer, the functionality they offer, they're extremely well priced uh, given what I've seen out there in the market. So if you guys want one, head to the website, just type in uh, backpack or bag uh, in the search and you'll find it. Uh, we're shipping every day, so that's awesome. Just in time for spring, I think you'll uh, be really impressed with it and you'll love it and help protect your helmet. Um, beyond that, uh, yeah, that's it. No more questions. I really appreciate you guys' time. It went way longer than I thought, uh, but I do appreciate all the interaction. I love answering questions. You guys want to make suggestions, this will be on the YouTube channel, um, so you can go back and look and ask questions and put in the comments. We'll check it. We'll respond. Suggestions for more stuff, let us know. Check out the other YouTube videos we've done. Uh, had a bunch of racer interviews and uh, just interesting stuff, not just model sp or uh, product specific. Um, and with that, again, I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. And every month around this time, uh, we do another live broadcast, and we'd love to see you there. Thanks, guys.